Mickey Mantle, is that what you're upset about? Mickey Mantle makes $100,000 a year. How much does your father make? I don't know. You don't know? Well, see if your father can't pay the rent. Go with Mickey Mantle and see what he tells you. Mickey Mantle don't care about you, so why should you care about him? Nobody cares. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Nobody Cares Live. We are broadcasting to you from the beautiful and picturesque southern shores of New York City, the one and only town without pity, Staten Island. And we are at the beautiful District Bar at 2 Sneden Avenue in Annadale. I have officially been accepted by the south shore of Staten Island. I have been, this is like the cathedral. The cathedral down here. Yeah, I've been Lamo. a lot. There's Rangers, banners everywhere. I don't know if you're a hockey fan, but after you come in here, you feel like one. My guest on the show tonight to start us off is a legend here in the South Shore basketball community. He's the head coach of the St. Joseph C. Varsity basketball program and so much more in the community, Mike Cortese and his son, Antonio. Welcome to the broadcast, boys. Thank you for having us, brother. Always a, always a great time. I get the opportunity to chop it up with you. Yeah, you can put those plates of food right there on the table. Thank you so much. What is that stuff? Fat Joe slider. slider and buffalo wings. Fat Joe slider? Like lean back after you eat them? Wow, those look fantastic. All right, we're going to crush those. Antonio's looking at them like, dude, I don't know about this show. I might just eat those. Those look good, man. I wasn't expecting that. That's a step up from bar food. Shout out to Carmine allowing us to come out here tonight and do the show here from district uh mike cortese at this point brother how long have you been coaching basketball in the community or how long have you been involved in the i don't want to say how old are you because that's just (laughs) that's not the right way to start things off i been lucky enough been coaching this beautiful game since since the day i graduated college uh mia picked me up at a lady star to see my local parish and that was 2005 so you could do the math um started coaching the community 2005 at Our Lady started to see and spent a few years there and went on to St. Joe's when I took on the freshman job. Coach Welly hired me to take on the freshman job. Spent a few years at Malloy College uh, before I came back to where I am now as the varsity head coach for St. Joe's. I think I just completed my 12th full year as a varsity coach. Man, I don't know how you do it. I don't know, you know, your wife. Uh, as I mentioned, needs a fruit basket. He's the best. I, I know that, you know, she's often given you permission to go out into the community and continue to serve and do things. The fact that she allowed you to come on Nobody Cares Sports tonight, I don't know, there's definitely going to have to be chocolate on the strawberries, I feel. How great is your mommy? Good. Best mom in the world? Yes. That's a solid answer. She's the best, you know, because of her and these guys are support at home, you know, allows coaches and people like us to do what we do and do what we love. Absolutely. Well, one of the things I wanted to, I guess one of the reasons why we came out to this South Shore of the Island tonight is we do work here at District sometimes. You know, we work with Down to the Fell Casino Rentals and we do friendly feud, not family feud, because we don't want to get sued by Steve Harvey. <laughs> um, and that's lit. And we always have a lot of fun with that. This is the first time we're doing Nobody Cares Live here. You said that you have your own event going on this weekend and it's called Champions Cause. It's Friday, 5 p.m. here at District. Tell me a little bit about that event. Um, well, first off, I mean, this, like, like you said, this place is a, it's a staple in the South Shore community. Um, you know, it had a lot of different titles over the years, but when Carmine took it over over many years back and really converted it to play sports bar, um, when I was running a charity called Coaches Care Fund that I started with Coach Artie Conroy, uh, Coach Paul Cadasco and some other local coaches, we started a March Madness event, a Sunday fun day. It used to be, uh, just getting some local community members around and raising some money for local sports organizations, local yep. sports athletes. And it just turned out to be an annual thing. And this year we're trying to mix it up and we're doing it on a happy hour Friday. Happy hour Friday. I mean, happy hour is a, it's a dangerous term because it's, it's, there's no universal so happy the, hour. The there's a different time if, for everyone. If you see the invitation on social media, it says five to question mark. Oh, so I got you. So it depends, you know, it could be five to five thirty. Or oh yeah. No, no, no. It could be, you know, five till, you know, you go home mark. in a shopping cart kind of deal. Yeah. I understand. Um, it also happens to be the sweet 16 of March madness. So, I mean, I'll go out just to watch the sweet 16 of March madness and you throw in the champions cause and a good time and help in the community. I mean, you're almost a terrible human being if you don't come out. <laughs> so, like, if you like, if you if you support local community stuff, 
You love Perfect basketball, right? Obviously, we've got great food here. I'm going to punish myself <laughs> off camera with the food that they just brought out. I mean, this Friday at 5 p.m., 5 till whenever the champions cause, I am 100% in. I mean, Antonio, are you going to be here? What are you doing on Friday? Coming, coming to the event. You're coming, yes. you're coming here. He was here last year with you. Uh, yeah, I understand that he's a baseball player. He's a southpaw naturally, which means you're a lefty. Uh, I'd like to sign him again. You know, he's very young, but agent wise, I'm all about it. Uh, now, Mike, I know that's a lot to digest. We might not, you know, sign your son here. We'll get through that another we'll talk day. About that off camera. Yeah, we'll talk off about camera. that off camera. Um, I do want to talk more a little bit about more than just basketball. You're also getting the kids learning in the community. And I should probably go to whatever center you've created because learning isn't the correct terminology. Um, it's called the Courtside Learning Center. So, um, you know, I'm a teacher at heart. You know, I'm an educator. I'm lucky enough to be teaching at IS-34 in the Tottenville area and been teaching now for the last 15 years. And been tutoring throughout that time and we just my sister and i we just opened up a space right here in princess bay called the uh, courtside learning center and we'll be catering ages k through 12 providing academic support in all content areas test prep so you can uh, come in and be like there's no way i'm gonna get a good score on the sat and you're like we, we're gonna help you out. we will be taking our you know goal driven approach you know as a coach you know as an educator we want to just motivate and you know get get students of all ages and levels to excited about learning you know, do they um do they still do regents and stuff like that in high school the regents you know test state tests are coming up we'll be opening we'll be having our grand opening we'll be posting on social media for the ela state test coming up then there's the med state test regents all those fun words you remember Dude, from your childhood and uh, i um I'm going to be honest with you the lowest score because i don't i'm not i don't own a learning center so there's no you know my stock doesn't go down at all by saying I'm the lowest region score that I ever had. But the chemistry regions? What? Why one. does that exist for <laughs> Curtis High School students, right, in, in mainstream, right? Uh, 32. 32 on that test. Remember that number. That was, number you won't forget. That was tough because I remember my friend Dave laughed right in my face, right? And I was like, well, that's not going to go over well at home, I thought to myself. So I wish the, uh, well, the Courtside Learning Center was around when I was a kid because I sure could have used it. So that's going to that's gonna be opening on the South Shore, brother. We wish you lots of success with it. But this Friday night, Champions Cause, Sweet 16. Uh, do you have um, a pick left in the uh, March Madness? Um, Doug Elwell is going to come on and talk a little March Madness. Yeah, but... I got some of my picks left. You know, it's just it's the best time of year, man. I, yeah. I think it's Christmas and then March Madness. Um, so it's the best time of year. And again, Friday, um, Carmine, again, he's the best. He, he always puts his best foot forward for the community. He He's a guy that never hesitates. Carmine, can we have this? Can you help with this? He, The answer is always yes for him. Yeah. And you combine that, like you said, with the Sweet 16, with some good, good company, some happy hours, some great food. Um, it's always a great day. These people are phenomenal. Fernando, he like he's the bar manager here. He's like the greatest human being in the world. You know, he's just all business. He's yeah. kind of lurking like impending danger in the shadows, though. He's very sneaky. He's like the butler from Mr. D. It's like he's always kind of behind up. you. He's gonna pop up. He's there the to door. help. He's there to help. But we appreciate Fernando greatly, just like we appreciate you, Mike and Antonio, our guest of the hour. We appreciate you. We'll Thanks. see you Thank this you. weekend or in, Thank you. in Thank you. Major League Baseball one day. Thank or you, buddy. Or the NBA. Or, or, or some, or both. What do you like better, basketball or baseball? No basketball. pressure. No, there was no pressure there. You didn't have to answer basketball is what I was trying to say. You know, I don't know if your father is pinching you. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. You know, you could have we said whatever. You, both equally. you want to do badminton, you do badminton. I just want to let you know. You do what you want. Go where your heart takes you. You like soccer? No, you don't like that. That was an honest answer. Bookie's not going to like that at all, but I appreciate you. Antonio and Mike Cortez, our next guest on the broadcast is Scott from Too Many Topics Podcast. He's going to be talking with us about, well, quite frankly, how he was randomly hired like a stranger in a parking lot to do broadcasting with me and on sports he knows nothing about. Here he is. Yeah. No. And uh, look how far he's come, right? He just crawled out of a dumpster. Come on, dude. Showtime. Wake up. Um, Antonio, Mike Cortese, we appreciate you. Best of luck with all your endeavors and keep crushing it with everything you do, brother.
appreciate it, man. I, I, you know, I feel that you appreciate all you do for oh. the community, you know, traveling around all the Staten Island from the south to the north, anything in between from sports to promoting local charities. You know, we, we appreciate this. No, 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 no. Uh, I appreciate you, man. Too. Next time St. Joseph sees doing basketball, don't be a stranger, you know, pick up the phone. You're right there, man. I do a lot of stuff with Peters, but I'm not afraid to take no, the heat. No, you know what I'm saying? saying? We had, you know, we were one of you. I think we were, might have been one of your first broadcasts. Yeah. When you first started going. Got that right. You know what I mean? I remember gyms, where it started doing open gym. Loyalty uh, lineage starts, right? So, so we're in it, man. We're in it to win it. Mike, we appreciate you going to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, Scott Sotero, Too Many Topics Media joins us. Uh, can we be bought by sponsors? Absolutely, we can. Nobody cares. Fact is, he's the sponsor. And you signed a contract guaranteeing him certain concessions, one of them being a spot on the show. Well, that's where I see things just a little differently. Contractor, no. I will not bow to any sponsor. Sorry, you feel that way, but basically it's the nature of the beast. Maybe I'm wrong on this one, but for me, the beast doesn't include selling out. Garth, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's like people only do things because they get paid. And that's just really sad. I can't talk about it anymore. It's giving me a headache. Here, take two of these. Ah, new print. Little, yellow, different. Look, you can stay here in the big leagues and play by the rules, or you can go back to the farm club in Aurora. It's your choice. Yes. And it's the choice of a new generation. Hey, welcome back to the studio, ladies and gentlemen. It's Danny Shannad being joined right now by, well, it's not Mike Cortese anymore. It's Scott Sotero, Too Many Topics. Scott, welcome to the broadcast, brother. Danny, Danny, thank you. I don't know why you got me here to sabotage and... and probably lose followers but once again i do appreciate being on this fantastic network well as you know it's impossible to hire people um and um with that being said i basically found you loitering in a parking lot one day and asked you if you wanted to broadcast some little league baseball and the rest is history you did promise me a ride home yeah no to which uh you saw that my brakes were smoking and you decided you know what i'm just gonna walk to seven miles no I'm big deal use the finger. it's raining too it's all right I do have um, to say that I do not think that I'm going to be able to upstage Antonio. Kid's unbelievable. Unbelievable. He was eyeing up these these uh, sliders that Yo. are absolutely delicious looking. Um, They're called the Fat Joe sliders, <laughs> which they, they appropriately called that. They um, look fantastic. They really do. Yeah. I am going to punish them. You know, like when you eat food cold, it's almost like it doesn't count. Do you ever feel that way? These are definitely going to count. Yeah, they count. They're going to count around your waist. That's going to sure. hurt. Um. I'll tell you something else, though. We recently broadcasted volleyball for the first time. And I said, I want you in the booth. And you said, Danny, I don't know anything about volleyball. And I said, well, that's perfect. I still don't. Yeah. I, quite frankly, I'm a bit confused as well as to some of the things. Um, but that's going to happen in the future because nobody cares. going to be broadcasting a lot of new sports where we're just going to kind of be learning the rules i guess as we go well, the terminology i think that's what pisses people off the most right when i when i bought when i butcher certain terms i'm sure you get that my hate mail file has been uh, completely full over the yeah. last week oh um i tried to defer it to the bookie but unfortunately it's finding its way to me yeah you can't you, when you try and tell people that they could forward their hate mail to the bookie on instagram it's a real solution that they think is another joke where you're like trolling them and then um, it escalates, it, like it throws gasoline on the fire, right? And then some sort of existential breakdown takes place in that person's brain when they go to lay down at night. And just before they go to bed, they're like, you know what? Let me just look up and see. And they see on Instagram that the Chinese bookie is a real human being. And then they question what life is before they go to bed. Well, I will say it did take me probably a good 10 weeks to realize that he was a real human being as well. It's so real. I do. My heart goes out to those people that, that don't understand it on the surface. No. And I'll tell you somebody else that doesn't understand quite literally next to anything that we have ever done here at Nobody Cares Sports Network. And that is the Commodore who's going to be joining us tonight from Studio 44. He's live backstage right now. And I'm, I'm wondering, A, if he's ever going to button all of the buttons on his shirt. If people in Florida just, you know, the think, top three buttons never get buttoned. I think he gets thrown out of, you know, whatever club he's in down there if he does that. 
Isn't that kind of a sign? Now, you don't get thrown out of the 55 and older. The only way you get thrown out of the 55 and older is if you die, right? So, <laughs> There's no. no Mahjong club or anything? No, no, no. Okay. That would be the other group of people. <laughs> yeah. Got Down it. the road a little bit. Got it. Yeah. We've discussed it. Uh, Commodore, are you ready to join the show? I don't know what you're ferociously writing. <laughs> He's probably writing down uh, my email address. Yeah, yeah. Hate yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. He's like, what was that? Back it up a second. Joining us now from Studio 44 in Central Florida, it is the one and only Commodore. Commodore, welcome to the broadcast. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome from sunny Florida. Oh, Jenna. Hold on, Commodore. Jenna's bringing over cocktails. This is unbelievable. Excellent. Uh, hey, I'm going to join you. Uh, I got a cup of coffee here from the HP Grill. Right here in Leesburg, Florida. Okay. All right. Hold on. Hold on, Commodore. We got a Moscow Mule. What was the second one? A Lily. All right. And then, and what is, what's that one? It's just, and that's, an apple. that's an apple spritz. Danny's favorite drink. All right. How did you know? I actually have one of those every Monday morning. Thank you so Thank much. You. District is hooking it up tonight, Commodore. Commodore, welcome back to the broadcast. Um, we have a bevy of drinks in front of us. Hey, I was saying, Dan, I got a drink here, too. I got a nice cup of coffee from the HP Grill right here in beautiful Leesburg, Florida. That's what they call the cafeteria of the hospital. They give it a different name every day. No, let me tell you, it's the place, it's the place to be. Best grits in town. This is interesting, and I don't mean to turn this into a My Cousin Vinny thing, but I've never had a grit. I got to oh, tell well. you, I was in Florida about... A year ago, and yep. I made the big, big, huge mistake of asking the waiter what exactly a grit was. That's not all right. There was 14 people around my table trying to. Yeah. Explain to it's me. basically like a cream. Danny, it's like a cream of wheat. I can I could see that in the texture. But my thing is, you know, is it's it's served like is it like. Um, well, it's made with corn is what is it, it is. Yeah. With butter. Well, yeah, they like to eat it with butter, but I think that's disgusting. I like butter, but me, I like to, believe it or not, they think I'm nuts. I put maple syrup, brown sugar on it, a little bit of milk. I eat it like a cereal. Um, I think brown sugar goes on anything. Yeah, absolutely. So does syrup. You know, I'm like Buddy the Elf down here. You could put <laughs> syrup on anything. Same you could put Frank syrup Frank. on absolutely anything is right, Danny. <laughs> I've got hot sauce on a lot of things. Uh, now it just now that we know that after talking with the Commodore, we know that in Florida, the residents down there pour syrup all over their gator before they eat it. <laughs> no, let me tell you something. Speaking of gators, <laughs> it's mating season. <laughs> Why do you mating know when it's gator mating season? <laughs> because <laughs> why? Me. Because yeah. how do you know when it's anything mating season? They they all come out. They're laying in the sun. They're strutting their stuff all around, and they make these wonderful sounds. Man scares me. It is, uh, and and if you and if you could <laughs> stop talking about it, um, I'll actually send you an advance um, <laughs> to never bring this up again. Okay. What else you want to talk about? You want to talk about St. Patty's Day down here in Florida? It was not really. That was man. last week. But no, I just listen, man. I want to tell you something. You said before meeting you, season. Dude, you mentioned before, uh, what's his name? The butler, Mr. Deeds. Yeah. Dude, I went to a St. Patty's Day party. There was a bagpipe in there, and I said to Stephanie, it's Mr. Deeds. It was his doppelganger. I'll send you the picture. You'll get a good laugh out of it. But mm -hmm. uh, anyhow, Danny, you followed us at CAA at all? No, shut no. up. Listen, Danny asked me if, if I was watching NCAA Commodore. men's basketball. I Commodore. said no. Commodore, stop ranting. Okay. We want to take it back. Why do you know when it's a random animal's mating season? Because Florida's got me now. I'm okay. a Florida man. You got to know these things so because they get a little aggressive. You got to be careful. Squirrels, for example. Yeah. Do you know when they are mating? I think they screw all the time. Okay. How would you know that? Because there's baby squirrels year round. <laughs> Oh, I see. Here's the deal. The alligators, and you could ask the commission this because he heard it. They, yeah, no, no. they scared the hell out of us. They make this sound. It's like. That's when they're horned up and ready to go. Interestingly enough, many men make that same sound. I'm telling you, I, it, it, it's like, oh, it's that sound. But anyhow, one does it like in one end of the green swamp, 
and the other one does it up in the other end. It's scary as hell. You don't want to be in the middle of them. I, you, well, you come on now. So, listen, hot to- uh, listen I just want to know this. This guy from Hot sound. Topics over here, Hot Topics. You keep you bringing sing- him on the show, bringing him on the show, Hot Topics. No, Great you're not guy. I like what you're doing. When am I going on Hot Topics? No, no, you're not. You're not allowed to discuss whatever else you want to discuss because you've exposed a, a part of the culture that I feel many people need to be aware of whether they're thinking of visiting florida <laughs> going to florida i want people to know listen listen there was a guy there was a guy, there was a guy up in the villages listen this guy up in the villages last week he was bass fishing he reaches into the pond he catches a three pound bass which is about this big and this fat he reaches into the pond to pull it out the alligator takes his arm and the fish Another reason to move to Florida. Well, another reason to listen. Another reason to n- rip the uh, Listen. Another reason to know what the hell you're doing. You never stick your hand in a creek or a pond down here to get a fish at. That's why they invented nets. But uh, yeah, man, I don't know about the squirrels, man. Squirrels are good hunting. Squirrels uh, are good hunting. Uh, let's just take it back here. Obviously, um, there's a lot taking place here, and no, there's a lot. You know, hold on. No, no, no. I will mute your microphone, sir. For and I, and it won't be the last time. But just stay with me. Let's have a conversation. Not a. We're not getting berated here. Um, it seems the snakes are still a problem in Commodore. Are they? Are those uh, Burmese yes. pythons still running loose? Well, we haven't had a Burmese Burmese, Burmese python, but just the other day. Uh, my wife opened up the back door to Lynn and I, Dan, and you know exactly where I'm talking about. And she stepped outside and there was by, probably about a three, four foot. Uh, it was a black snake. They call them a racer snake. They're non-lethal, but it'll... I'm, I'm muting his mic. That's not a Burmese python. I didn't ask him if he saw any, any snakes in Florida. There's plenty of snakes in Florida. That's, that wasn't the question, right? At all. But he, he's going. Yeah, and he keeps going. So it's fine. I, I was going to say I wanted him to hunt Burmese pythons, right? To where he just says, I saw a black snake the other day. He's like a senile old man. But he live, right? Does he live in the villages? I don't necessarily want to give away no. his location okay. because, either. you know, <laughs> I, you know, this is this is life now for the I, Commodore. I heard, I heard about those the villages. It's a little freaky down there. It's not a normal place for no, any old individuals old. or human beings over 55 or under, you know. Okay. It's just kind of like keep it moving. Go ten miles over when you get close. I said, because if he did, that would explain a lot. Well, it certainly would. Uh, Commodore is bringing that much to the table tonight. We're gonna ask him to. Um... I got something for you. I can't wait for it. I went to the Yankee spring training game on Monday against the Phillies, and Beldor pitched five perfect innings of baseball, and Joe Torre came out and took him out. Yeah, off guys that'll be bagging groceries next week in spring training. I don't think so. Let me tell you something. Beltdoor, he was on the injured reserve list. They got him out of San Diego last year, and he got hurt early on. He didn't produce, but I got to tell you something. He could be a good addition to the Yankee pitching staff for what it's worth. So every now and then, I do bring Every time I do, I I try and bring something to the table because you've got absolutely nothing. And listen, the only way you could get thrown out of a 55-year-old community here in Florida is if the Commodore throws you out. No, it's if you die. No, the Commodore will throw you out. I mean, people people die all the time. All the time. Well, Commodore, it's been absolutely riveting listening to you rant about, well... You want to know my what final four picks or what? Do you want to know my final four yeah. picks? Send it in. What do you got? Okay, here's oh, the deal. Right? Oh, Ooh. who's that? Is that the bookie? Look at this. Counter, we've Hold got. On. Here's my final questions. four picks. Here you go. I like North Carolina, Purdue, Tennessee, and Yukon. North Carolina, Purdue, two number one seeds. Tennessee, they're probably going to get bounced out. And Yukon's the number one. So- all right, so you pick three number ones and a Cinderella. That's right. All right, Commodore, that's great. Um, Scott, can I have some of your money to bet the <laughs> Commodore's <laughs> irrational March Madness picks? Certainly Listen, put your money up there, boys. He looks like he knows what he's talking about. All right, I got an old-fashioned here. I got an I'm apple gonna, spritzer. I got a I Moscow think, mule. I think we try all of them. Let's see what we like. 110%. <laughs> what could go wrong? It's right next to the train camera? station. Yeah, you could drink on camera. You could do a lot of things on camera. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. There's no rules. The lily. That's going to be ginger and vodka. Also, vodka. ginger beer. 
There's a lot happening. It's not really mine unless I'm on a, like an island. The apple but... spritzer is nice um, if you got weird last night. Yeah. You know, and you like woke a, up on a beach. It seems like a bougie drink. Yeah, it's not necessary. The um, This one here, the old-fashioned. This Girly is drinks. You, this is what you drink after you've lost your job in the Great Depression and you have to go home and tell your wife. You drink about three of these. And you have a good, healthy conversation when you go home. The, the uncle, yeah. the yeah, uncle goes like this. Blah, 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 blah. Your uncle blah, used to blah, drink blah, those? The one my mother told me to stay away from. Yeah, that was probably good advice there. Bro, we've got another drink coming out. What is it? This is the last one from Fernando. An espresso martini. Is there another sports This is unbelievable. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Call this is Uber now. This, this thing is beautiful. As well, Commodore, wow. say say good night. We've got Dougie Elwell coming on the show next. He's going to be talking March Madness. Give him my final four. Finally. Say hello to the boys. I will. I'm out of here. I will. Good Some night, everybody. Will. Good night, sir. Commodore, great stuff as always. Don't call me, man. sir. Yeah, the other yeah. guy did. You didn't say anything to him. I missed it. You can follow this man um, on the Instagram <laughs> machine. It's uh, the Commodore joins us from Studio 44 in um, not Hawaii, Florida. Central Florida. At yeah. Nobody Cares Commodore. That's right. Follow this man on Instagram at Nobody Cares Commodore. What he brings to the table. I think he should send a video of alligators or crocodiles or whatever those large beasts are called down there. Yeah. Mating. In mating. In in mating. Yeah. I don't know, but I, I don't think I, I, I never, I don't know anybody that's ever saw that, but somehow. We have a lot of alligators. Yeah, anyway, nobody's seen it, but we know it's mating season. We know the it's mating season. Not up. Sir, the noises you made, I hope nobody was watching because you're about to be made into a meme that the internet possibly can't handle here on Staten Island. So Give me the wind, something fierce, you know. I'm going to go play lotto across the street. When we come back, Doug Elwell is going to be joining us to talk logical sense of March Madness. Lord knows too many topics, and Danny did, did a terrible job of just anything. I had fun. We got mad food and mad drinks in front of us, Commodore. Commodore, thanks for coming on. It was a pleasure. Uh, Scott, I am going to drink all of these off yeah. camera and punish myself. Drinking them on camera. Yeah, why not? Um, no, 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 not at all. Um, we will get canceled. Joining us in a hot second, Dougie. You talking to the bookie over there? Are you ready to come on? All right, man. Uh, we'll be back in 35 seconds with Dougie talking. What is it? March Madness basketball? That's, That's exactly right. What it is. Nobody cares. Back after this. Look, I'm standing. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Holy shit. Go back to work. That house is like 400 yards away. Is that good? That's unbelievable. Beginner's luck. 20 bucks says you can't do it again. Bring it on. <laughs> you boys are gonna pay for that! Ow! You hit that guy! He shouldn't have been standing there. One more time, double or nothing. You better pay up. I'll try, I would try to ask, welcome to the broadcast, everybody. Um, Doug Elwell joining us. I gotta change this graphic here on screen. Doug Elwell of Inspire Hoops. What's up, guys? Joining us in the booth, Dougie, you got to make uh, love to the microphone. Sorry about that. It's been a couple of weeks there. I apologize. You should apologize, Doug. <laughs> um, we're talking March Madness here from a basketball head that knows what the hell he's talking about. We just had the Commodore give his um, his final four picks, which were like asking Antonio Cortese what his final four picks were going to be. Um, he gave uh, Purdue. Yep. UConn, yep. Uh, UNC, North Carolina. So he picked all the one seeds, and he said Tennessee. <laughs> well, Tennessee and Purdue in the same 
bracket, so that's not gonna that's work not out. possible. That's not going to work out too well for the Commodore. He's in. He's he's backstage <laughs> right now, screaming at the, at the camera. I can see him. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it didn't work out for him at all. So I picked all the one seeds in a two seed. That's in the same bracket as the one seed. That's right. We're talking March Madness right. uh, with Doe Elwell. Sorry, Doug. Let me change that. Your that's name my, is not uh, Doe. That's uh, that's my street name, Doe. That's uh, that's unfortunate. Let me see. How did we? Uh, that's your street name. They call me street. Doe on the streets, kid. Call me Doe. Um. Doug, I know nothing about college basketball. I will tell you that Wagner seemed to go uh, famous for all the wrong reasons. You can't choose what you go famous for in life, and I've always said that. But they went viral in the tournament for presenting Hoosier-style basketball, five men on the court and just two players yeah. on the bench. And part of that reason is, NCAA March Madness tournament is funded and they have a budget and there's all sorts of stuff that like we would never ever correctly and accurately cover. Right. Sure. But from that budget, there's all sorts of X's and O's that they got to cross off of who can go. And it c comes down to scholarship people. And are you on scholarship? Are you not? And some instances, full on marching bands weren't allowed to go where another school's marching band would wear that school's t-shirts yep. and play that school's fight songs. And it'd be yep. like, what the hell's going on here? Yep, yep, yep. And it would be like, yeah, the, the school couldn't send the marching band. Yeah. It's like with all the money that that's why like, I try not to get into it. But what really happened is a similar situation where there was kids that weren't on scholarship. They're able to play all year, you know, just regular basketball. And then they go to play in this tournament and the tournament's like, you need to have these X's and O's crossed off. They couldn't, and, and they tried to beat North Carolina, yeah. who's a one scene pro projected to go to the Final Four with seven people. Yeah, and on, on the unfortunate thing, Dan, because obviously since I was a Seahawk at one point. Excuse me um, while I enjoy this definitely espresso enjoy martini. I, I won't be, so you can take that. Um, so a lot of people don't know this, and a lot of people, I'm glad that we're watching the games, whether it was uh, the Howard game or oh God, the North fantastic. Carolina game, they were all kind of given the opportunity to learn a little bit about Wagner and about, um, you know, the college and everything. But more importantly, you know, um, people didn't realize, like, they didn't just have seven guys. Like, there were more guys that were there. Unfortunately, injuries and stuff happened and, you know, things like that couldn't stop them from participating. Um, but um, with all that being said, it's been about two months since they were playing with seven guys. So it wasn't like all of a sudden they got to the tournament and only seven guys are healthy and only seven guys are allowed to play. It's been about two months where they had, I believe, the uh, one of the backup quarterbacks of the football team was having practice with them because they couldn't even play five-on-five five at practice and the coaches were getting involved in practice. So, um, you know, it, people thought that, oh, seven guys are playing. Um, it wasn't new to them. And as you can tell from the, the stamina from those guys, so I'll tell you right now, from being in that situation and playing against those teams – on that environment to play 40 minutes like two or three of those guys did is remarkable in itself, let alone, uh, you know, having only seven guys, but three of, three of them are playing 40 minutes, um, you know, and back-to-back -back games. And then, and like, Doug, it, it, was, it was a 12-point game, you know. It was like you have seven guys on your team and you're able to keep it like a 10 or 12 yeah. point game for a half. Listen, I, I was going to say, unbelievable. That, that's exactly right. Dan. And I, <laughs> that's I, I crazy. Was, I, you know, as people, it was so funny because now I'm a teacher, obviously I'm in Staten Island community a lot. So when, when people saw Wagner was on, people were like kind of telling me good luck. Like I was playing, hey, good luck, buddy. Like I was playing. So I was, it was exciting, but, um, you know, so so people are not Let you really wear it. The glory days are behind you. Your knees hurt. I understand. Dude, I just I, want to put that out there. You have no idea, Dan. You have yeah. no idea. But I, I wish I had one more. Like, like that experience of playing in the tournament is just, I can't imagine how it is. Mm. You know what I mean? Just the experience of being on national TV, what, what like that kind of, st uh, you know, stigma behind you and, you know, being able to play on those kind of, like, think about it, right? You play at Wagner College. How many people do they fit in there? Maybe 2,500? Yeah, that, yeah, it's it was a small, probably, it's a yeah. really small school, yeah, in comparison. Yeah, and, and and gym wise, there's your gym is very small, it's not, it's one of the smallest ones in the conference, if, if at all. And I think the um, uh, University of North Carolina's, yeah, you know, Durham but, Arena holds like 18,000. They, they probably traveled with 2,500 people from the team, 100%. Program. Yeah, so, when you think so about it. when you when you when you break it down like that, you know, you're playing now, all these arenas that they're playing in aren't even arenas, they're like conference, um. Um, what you call it, like coliseums and stuff like that. They're big places, yeah. And they're just throwing a basketball court in the middle, um, and there's fifty thousand people watching that one game. So you you go from playing 
2,500 people in front of you, you know, and and, and those on, gyms weren't even sold out when they were playing, them, uh, you know, and that's exactly right, too, because, you know, when I was playing, we had a really big uh, sec, uh, student section. We had a lot of support from other teams and other programs and Wagner. Um, so our gym, most nights when school was in session, it wasn't like winter break or anything like that. We had the gym packed from, you know. Uh, and there was bleacher, was it know? was it the same gym or was it an older? It gym? was the same gym. Okay, don't don't date me that much. Dan. I'm not. It was you know, the same gym. Was yeah. it? Did they keep the stats on stone? You yeah, know, yeah. along there was the no. Court? I'll tell you like, the funny. It. The funny part is that now, which is awesome because I, as a basketball junkie like myself, I could turn on ESPN Plus and I can watch a game from anywhere on the country that's streaming live. Like yeah, we, that's like, cool as hell. Like, like nobody cares sports does for high school kids here and, and CYO kids here, but um. You know, now in the country, any program, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, they're streaming their games so that you can watch them live on your television with their own media broadcast team and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, they, they're like they've, that, they've taken over. That, they're like we're that not did gonna... not exist when I played. When I played, the game might have been streamed. There was no announcers or like that. It was you just actually like you watched needed the live a fanatical the father to bring a yeah. camcorder yeah. and then actually, unfortunately, make friends with that yeah. kid, whether his personality was I, dead or not. I know, I know, my dad, yeah. my dad, and my mom. They used to travel to go watch me play because they, that didn't exist back then. So they went out to Kansas State, they went out to UCLA, they went out to all these places, they went to Vegas to watch us play because there was no other opportunity to do that. You know, so now it's just really cool to see all that and and how it transpires, but. You know, Wagner, they did what they could. They did a good they job. They did a phenomenal they did, you know, job. First um, four in, and then they got, and, you know, the, the doors blown off. As of right now, Carolina. as of right now, which is the biggest thing, uh, not one of their guys has went to the transfer portal yet. Everyone is still there, and everyone returns next year. Well, shout so, out to the coach. Like we Absolutely. Said, Donald, Cop Donald Copeland is a great coach. I actually played with him in college a little bit, uh, one of the pro leagues in Jersey. That when he's a couple years older than me. He's a great guy, great player. Um, his staff, really good. They got a good player development coach in Malik Booth, who used to be uh, the starting point guard for St. John's back in the day. So th they have guys there that know what they're doing. But, you know, to have that experience and, and you know, someone, a couple of the announcers on the game were talking about the Wagner guys as if they were higher major players. Yeah. So, you know, if I'm that one of those players and I hear that, I'm like, hey, you know what? Maybe I can go somewhere higher. But right now, it's, it's, I'm so happy none of those guys have jumped into the have portal Have jumped yet, up there and said which is, which they're is not great. feeling themselves too much, yeah, right? I, you mean, think, uh, I mean, also, you too, do. you know, you, you, you experience that once and you have no one on your team right now that's really healthy. If you have your full team, you know, think about – I mean, I'm not saying they would have beat North Carolina, but for the last two months, if they had a higher, a higher record – in terms of win loss, they might not have been a 16 seed. They might have been a 15 or a 14. Now you're talking about them playing one of the teams that, like, you know, Yale had to beat Op uh, Auburn in the first round. Right. So, so like, you know, if you have a better opportunity in the first round, or you're not playing a, a massive one seed, you know, then you know it, it doesn't happen often. It you know, changes F things. FDU got very lucky last year with their uh, experience playing against Purdue. Uh, they're one of the only teams that were 16 to beat a one. So, you know, you have to have a lot of luck on your side and you have to have, you know, balls bouncing your way, 50-50 balls, all that. So you have to play the perfect game and have all the calls go your way. Absolutely. Right. So like luck has to be on your side and you have to play the perfect Ab game. Absolutely. And and as we've seen throughout the tournament right now, all the one seeds are still intact. All the one seeds are dominating. Dominating. Like Purdue makes is making teams look like they're like in CYO compared it's to them. It's tough. Right now. Yeah, we've seen it. So we had the Commodore give his final four picks. One of them was uh, disqualified as two teams are coming from the same bracket, same bracket so it's not yeah. possible. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I wanted your money, Scott, to burn when betting on it. But, um, Doug, I'm, you're a little bit more seasoned, so why really? don't you give some fa your final four picks, all right, oh, while I pound this oh, um, that looks delicious, Fat Joe man. slider? That looks yeah, this thing is amazing. That looks delicious. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I actually feel like you're you've been a POW for some reason. That's what I think of athletic <laughs> trainers. Like you're a POW, <laughs> and I'm just like a free American. Like so, what's it like? <laughs> just be careful your sweater. You want to get out of your sweater? Well, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> Give me some final four picks. We're All at right. district so, having the time of our life. So in the East region, we got four teams left. We got UConn, San Diego State. We got Illinois, Iowa State. All four have been pretty dominant up until this point. Uh, but UConn is just a completely different animal than everybody else in the country right now. So I do have UConn winning the East region, going to the Final Four. Uh, the West region, you got UNC, Alabama, Clemson, and Arizona. I do 
like Arizona. Um, I'm going to tell you why. I think UNC Arizona will meet Arizona meets in the uh, lead eight, but I think Arizona having Caleb Love, who is a transfer from North Carolina, playing against North Carolina in the lead eight, he will actually get revenge on his old team, and I think Arizona is going to be in the final four. As wow. Well. Arizona's so, going to knock off UNC, is I what think, you're saying. I, I, that's what I think. UConn, Arizona. My. And then I have in the South region, oh, I got in my South region, right that's, where things, that's where things get shifted a little bit. Uh, you got Houston's the one seed, Duke's the four seed, NC State, and then you have Marquette, who's the second seed. This is the, this is the big one. I think NC State's going out of the South. NC State's the 11 seed. I think they're going to the Final Four. Taking Cinderella all the way to the ball? I'm thinking it. And, and here's why, Dan. NC State... A lot of people maybe didn't pay attention to the conference tournament. NC State won the ACC championship. They won, I believe, something like it over the last couple of weeks. They've won seven games in the last two weeks straight. Um, they're hot right now. Um, you'd love their big man, uh, DJ Burns, who is looks like Zach Randolph, if you remember Zach Randolph from, oh, yeah. the, from the Trailblazers, but like maybe about 70 pounds heavier than that. So it's fantastic. Him, 70 pounds heavier. Him, him moving, him moving and being able to do what he does on a basketball court is phenomenal. Uh, all aspects of that. So I actually have NC State out of the South. And then Purdue, Gonzaga, Creighton, and Tennessee. I have I, I I'm, I'm torn because I think Purdue has been very dominant of the tournament so far. I think they have a little chip on their shoulder from last year, their their early exit. And I think that they're trying to prove a point, uh, especially with Zach Eady, who's about seven four, just a man child. Um, but I got Gonzaga coming out of the Midwest. This is the most bizarre Final Four bracket I've heard. This wins Jody's. This is what this does. And I'm, I'm, I have 133 lines left in Jody's. So we are all good right now. Uh, so my Final Four, again, would be <laughs> UConn, Arizona, NC State, and Gonzaga. All right, man. You've heard it here. I think this is a solid, a solid bet that we could put in because <laughs> You're going to get some action on it on the FanDuel. Absolutely. Um, NC, NC State can, is 11 seed. They're the hottest team in the country right now. But uh, them being an 11 seed, Gonzaga is a five seed. So between those two teams, it's a long shot. But at the same time, I like the matchups. Uh, I do, if there's a sleeper team to pick in each of the two regions that I was talking about last, it would probably be Marquette and Tennessee. Those are two teams that are probably like the um, – uh, the sleeper teams that like I can see coming up and beating those two teams that I talked about. But, Lock this in right now. But those, Bookie, you hear me? Those Book, are my four. He doesn't have an American bank account. Scott, <laughs> lock this in right now. Those are my four. Those yeah, are my four. All the girls. Uh, Come Caitlin, on. That's Caitlin Clark all the way, man. I watched that game last night. Caitlin Clark. I heard uh, she Iowa. was talking shit the whole time, asking the refs for calls. Dude, she. Were they, were made, they like beating made, her up? Though? She may complain more than Luka Doncic <laughs> yeah. from the NBA. It's quite it's wild. But but she can back it up, man. She can play. She's a good basketball player. Uh, Paige Becker's had a great game last night, too. Had over 30 last night. Um, so the, the girls' game is in great hands. We don't have any problem with that. You know, you got LSU in there with Angel Reese. Um, you got the South Carolina girls with uh, Dawn Staley as their coach. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of great talent for, um, for the girls' game. And I, from what I heard last night, uh, the Iowa game had more viewers than any other game in all of March Madness so far. Yeah, I mean that and goes. Any, it's it's the effect game. of Caitlin Clark, I think. She's it's phenomenal. Like, I mean, it's listen, like when Tiger Woods played yeah. golf, people watched golf yeah. that never did yeah. before just because of the headlines. So, yeah. I mean, listen, she's a great role model for the girls. Um, you know, I'm sure Scott's daughter watches her, and other other girls on the island probably yeah. idolize her. I know I, I had a lot of friends on social media that when she played against Rutgers because they're in the Big Ten, they all went out and had their Caitlin Clark jerseys on, Clayton Clark shirts on, so and and showed love to her, and she does. From, from interviews and stuff like that, she does a great job of being an ambassador for the sport. She stays after the games, Dan. She signs every girl's autograph that she can possibly get to. Um, so, you know, it just shows that there's a humility to her. Um, Love her to game. see it, man. You know, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's tough. Listen, when you're when you got all that attention to you, it's very easy to not oh, you do the, could do be right not do an the right thing. Asshole. You know? Oh, absolutely. You could be like, I'm getting off the court. I'm going absolutely. on my locker. They're still going to write stories. They're absolutely. still going to pay tickets. That's, you know, Dan, that's that's the fun. That's the funniest thing that you just mentioned because, <laughs> in my profession now, when I meet some of the players I meet and the coaches I meet and stuff like that, um, some of these guys were like my heroes growing up. Yeah. So like when I meet, I like I met John Starks twice now in the last uh, six months. 
he's my favorite player of all time. Like if I, I, I had a good John, guy, I had John Starks posters all over my house. I had, you know, signatures of his jerseys. Do you his. think that he actually dunked on Jordan or do oh, you absolutely. think Jordan, Jordan was in the vicinity? How dare you, Dan? How dare you? It's like sacrilegious right now. You're saying that, but that's not sacrilegious. <laughs> it's, it's like, let's he's remove ourselves from the situation. Yeah, he's, he's in the poster. He tried to block the shot. He's in there. He's in there. And, and, and he was in there. He was in there. Who was it? Horace Grant was Horace the other Grant. one. Horace Grant was the body. Horace Grant was the main one that was getting posterized. Jordan tried to swipe at the ball. Jordan came over and tried to maybe do a block from the side he and then thought there. better of it. Listen, you got posterized. You're in the poster. That's what it is. So that's so anyway, uh, hold on. Wait, I, back, I, I, before, you, before we get on a tangent, I, I don't want to get on a tangent. I'll get a lot of so, like death threats, not even hate yeah, mail. There's a lot of John Starks fan in New York. You talk about um, Johnny Starks. <laughs> so I met him and pleasantly surprised or not pleasantly surprised just happy that the guy was extremely nice good good man good man like, yeah like like because th there there are perfect examples i don't want to name the people but i've met people where i'm like this guy oh, sucks man, this guy is annoying yeah like you yeah. know what i mean like no i can't believe like, you, you, then you turn you get turned off by it you no. know what i mean you don't want to you don't want to root for them anymore whatever and when you meet some of these people that could definitely be a possibility it changes and it's good that she's um you know taking that role as an ambassador to the sport um, you know, and, and it stirs the pot a little bit because then you start talking about, you know, players in the WNBA now compared to her and all that stuff. So it's great stuff, you know. Doug, I'm dying to play Connect Four. Okay, it's not going to happen. What we are going to do is we're going to have Chinese Bookie on the show. Mm. He's going to provide us with his Final Four. That's interesting. You have no idea of that. I'm just telling you now. He's been reading Hong Kong news for the last ten minutes. <laughs> Does he know the teams that are left? Dan? No way. Nice. I want you to look up teams that are left. I guess if you can, Bookie, uh, realistically, the people at home want you to pick four teams that are animals. So Animals? Yeah, animal mascots. Oh, you got plenty. You got the Huskies. You got Huskies. You got the Huskies. You got the Tar Heels, which is a, a Ram. Okay. You got the Roll Tide. That's not a that's not. You can't animal. go Purdue Boilermakers. That's What's, a the train. Clemson? What's Clemson? Tigers? Clemson is a Tiger. Arizona Wildcat. Oh, you got plenty. You got a lot, you got of, of, you got a lot of animals in there, Bookie. Plenty of animals. NC State's the wolf pack. Yeah. That's another animal. Look at that. Look at that. More animals than no animals. Gonzaga. What is Gonzaga? Gonzaga is. If you're if you're one of the negative five people that's fortunate enough to tune into this broadcast <laughs> tonight, just shout out the answers you may know. What's the, how about this, Dan? Ready? What's the worst mascot? How about that one? What's the worst mascot? St. Peter's. The peacock. Yeah. Isn't bad because it's it's like it's the game Cox from South Carolina. It's you just, could say go Cox and it's not offensive. It's just funnier. Yeah. Peacock. Yeah. Peacocks, go Cox. I, I, I go a different way with that. I think Tennessee's mascot is awful. A volunteer. What is that? It's tough. What is that? Actually, it's this is gonna we don't talk about this stuff on this network, but it's a historical reference to when men suited up during the Civil War. And they take that shit super seriously even today. <laughs> like the volunteers are playing yeah. today. Like, brother, yeah. that is more than a football yeah. game in Tennessee. <laughs> so um roll tide. Yeah. I am Crimson on tide. the record not making fun of the volunteers because they will drive north and blow up my I just, car. I just don't get it. Um, <laughs> damn, damn it, Doug. <laughs> I tried to say Tennessee, it. Tennessee, I don't like them. I don't like Alabama, the roll tide. I don't like that. It's an elephant. The roll tide is great though. Roll, roll tide. Oh, yeah, those people got problems. Right. Um, and fighting in Illini also, Illinois. Bookie's, Bookie's looked at all the animals in there. I feel he feels pretty confident. So Bookie's going to come on now and give his final four picks. Uh, we're going to roll another advertisement here. And um, I'll tell you right now, absolutely nobody cares. Bookie, you ready to rock? Yeah. Great job. Come on down. Yeah, Boys, Bucky is getting his bearings here as he figures out 
how many animals are left in March Madness because <laughs> he can only pick. He can only pick the animals. Yeah. So one of the brackets. Wow. Dog of bulldogs. It's a bulldog. Oh, okay. it's a bulldog. We're good. It's an animal. So you want me to pick Zags. right right off the bat? Zags. Well, the East region. Yep. The East region. I like a husky because I'm looking for the pets now. Me and my wife looking for the dog. You know, we might go to Alaska to look for the husky. I'm sorry. Is it, you're basing this on your life choices? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so the East region, I'll pick the husky. Husky. Yeah. The West region, go with the elephant. Clemson. I mean Alabama. Crimson Tide. Crimson Tide. Uh, Alabama. You go with the elephant. Elephant. Okay. Uh, the Midwest go with the bulldog. Gonzaga. Gonzaga bulldog. Oh, we found it. Gonzaga is a bulldog. Yes. yes. And the sox and the south that region go with the cox. Excuse me. The who? Is there even a school alive, or are you just is that where you are right now? No, go with the wolf pack. Wolf pack. NC State. <laughs> There are no cocks left. <laughs> There's no cocks left, okay? Bucky, do you understand how hard it is to keep people listening to this channel? And you're like, <laughs> well, the he's, There's he's, 16 he's, teams he's, left, and we want the cocks to win. He could have went to he could have went to Houston, which is the Cougars. That could have been that would have helped too. There, yeah. Cougars would have helped. Yeah, I mean Marquette, anything. Marquette Golden Eagles as well is another one. Marquette's Golden Eagle, yes. But he's going with NC State. He said Wolfpack. Yeah, Wolfpack. What that's your final four? That's my final Wolf, four. That, Wolf, yeah. NC State, Alabama, number UConn, number Gonzaga. one seed, Gonzaga, uh, number two and seed, and Gonzaga. These uh, are some wild well, picks no. from you guys. So he's he's the same as me. With just with, he switched out Alabama and Arizona. That's all. Yes. Nice, good job, Bucky. That's not bad. I like well, it. I like officially, it. the CB 13s who is open. Anybody is like you know interested? Right. So once again, we have to make this very clear to everybody at home as uh, it, it appears me and the three sliders and four different mixed drinks are starting to have an effect um you do not have a real app he's constantly telling people I'm working on to that. download I'm working. an app called cb13 and he's like oh let's download cb13 app it's not real Doug. right people go and they look and it's not real that's great um and he's like use promo code what is it <laughs> It's, it's not a real promo code because <laughs> it's not no a real problem. app. It's um, nobody cares. He tells people that they'll get paid, but in yen, not American. Uh, there's well, no like transfer. Dollar, rate. You get a return in yen. Right. And you never get paid because of like some sort of that it just doesn't come over somehow. So do you think this is a scam? No. Oh. Yes. I think you are a walking scam. Walking but we scam. have a pretty good final four locked in. It's all animals from the bookie and ironically, all animals from Doug as well. Who supplanted Alabama elephants with the Arizona Wildcats? Correct. I have the Wildcats. Yes. I've but you both have Gonzaga Bulldogs there. We do. Wow. UNC is not there for you guys. No. Wow. Look I at think, that. I think Arizona's. I think Arizona's going to beat them. I, th I mean, listen. Uh, right now, there's only one team really outside of the top five. Well, Clemson's the sixth seed. Uh, NC State's the only team that's outside of like the, the norm. They're eleven. And they're still NC State, which is an ACC school. They're not like, they're not like Yale or a couple years ago. We had Loyola, Chicago, like George Mason. They're still an ACC team that beat Duke in in the ACC in the tournament. tournament. Yeah, yeah. So they, they get that hot. They, they're still they good. peak yes. at the yeah, right time. So this is this is what the the March Madness. You know, the school get the school in the in the tournament yep. because they have to get into the tournament yep. to you know. That, you know, to qualify. See, it's the funny thing is, Bookie brings up a good point. Is no, he doesn't. They, Go ahead. Damn, he's smart. This guy's smart. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah, Jesus. So leave Bookie alone. <laughs> so no, he didn't give me any credit. No, credit, no. zero. Credit. No, zero credit. Zero credit. Yeah, credit. Bookie's got a good point. Let's he's hear got it. Got a good point. When 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 you're playing in these larger uh, conferences, yes, you don't have to win your tournament to get in. So like like a Wagner, a Yale, um, um a. Dayton schools like that, they have to win their tournament to yes. get in. Th these all these schools that are left, they're all from the big big five conference. So they're they call it the powerhouse, right? right. They're, they're, not, they're not surprises that these guys are here, mm -hmm. but the way that they're seated is a little bit of a surprise. Like NC State, a lot of people thought because they had such a good ACC tournament, should have been higher ranked, mm -hmm. but because they they were had did not have a great record, yeah. they, they were lower. But for the last two maybe last month or so, 
they've been the hottest team in the country. Right. So so it's not it's not out of the question. Um, and, and that's always what your goal was that, you know, you're, you're in college. It's so different than the NBA. So different from all these other school, uh, other uh, avenues. You have to get hot in, in the end of end of the season going into the tournament. If you're hot in, in November, no one knows. No one cares. You got to be see. hot turning on the end of the season. And, and Bookie's absolutely correct. NC well, State is the hottest it, team in the country. It's right? the hottest, you know, because they, they pick at the right times, yep. you know, go with yep. the right, you know, nobody's giving them you know, credit. You know, the only other two teams that you can even think about would be in that kind of uh, conversation is UConn, who's just been demolishing people all season, and Purdue, because they've just been, last two or three weeks, been beating up on everyone as well. But NC State, you know, I, I can definitely see them getting past Marquette, and then Houston Duke, it's a toss-up, so... Definitely a possibility for NC State to... Well, go. Houston, they're lucky enough to make it to the, what, the Sweet 16, yes, right? Yes. Let's be they're... honest with you guys, though. When it comes to March Madness, a lot of stuff doesn't make sense. Right. Maybe you should be getting your picks from the Chinese bookie at District <laughs> on a Tuesday night. Why not? Why not? And then not? when you look at Doug, he knows what he's talking about. Somewhat, and three somewhat. of four of his picks match up with bookies. Right. So I might just go totally opposite here. I'm not sure what to do here. All I know is Dan's picking the worst teams that are left just because it's like the opposite of what we're doing. Yeah, I can't. Whatever <laughs> you guys, you're on my well, team, he, so this can't know, be the answer. As <laughs> old says, is always bets against the bookie. That's why he picked this. Is that an old Chinese it. saying or an American saying? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> well, bookie, uh, as usual, it's been fantastic. Commodore, it's been fantastic with you, who's been hanging out along uh, the baseline um commodore can we, can we get him back up there to get his actual final four Why do you put in a <sighs> we'll, right we'll, we'll we'll bring commodore up for his actual final four but the bad news is he seems to have unbuttoned yet another button so i don't know what's he might even have a burmese Wait, python around his neck gator, gator don't play that yeah gator don't play that shit gay okay? never been about playing no shit Commodore, welcome back to the broadcast. Um, <laughs> what's up, Commodore? <laughs> hey, what's up, Dougie, baby? How you doing? Good, hey, man. How you doing? We I'm doing great, man. John Stocks is a great man. I'm looking at his signature on something right over here. Absolutely. I've been listening to you. That's a great man right there, John Stocks. Yeah. John Stocks. Listen, I just want to give a shout-out to Teddy Atlas. He's back. He's back on the air. He tore his ACL over there in Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. tripped over something in the gym. But uh, – yeah, John Stocks. I just looked up here to my left. I see his signature on uh, Grizzly you know, Adams. Have here. Move on, sir. Yo, here's <laughs> the deal. Like I your... like you guys go with all these animals, but you're leaving out one thing. Yeah, the Blue Devils. Yep, yep. Blue Devils. Blue yep, Devils. that's who it should have been. I'm sorry, Dan. I get confused. I'm old. I'm a senior. <laughs> oh, all of a sudden you're. Once well, you get confused, you're a senior. Well, well, you're all the you're, other days, you're, you're like the blue style. devil. You try to be the devil because of the coach K. He's devil in a blue dress, baby. He's Let me tell you something. Brady, he's passed. You know, he's, he's passed to be what? in the museum now. He can make you eat your words, Bucky. Uh oh. That, listen. <laughs> Aging experience will prevail over youth and cunning most of the time. Doug. Yep. I agree with you. Hey, Bookie. I wish, I wish Good luck, Bookie. I wish we could almost slime him. Like there was a way to <laughs> slime him in Florida and be like, you're fired. And just like, listen, man. Oh, oh, I just, can. I'm sad that the dog tracks are closed down here. They don't have any dog tracks anymore. Can you imagine no, if I was living here and they had dog tracks? Doug, did he get his final four pick? So he said Duke. But who you were? What uh, are your? Well, I'm replacing team? Duke. When you say, I, I'm throwing Tennessee out of there. He said they Tennessee's couldn't go. Happened. Okay. He's out. okay, so you got right. Duke so, and, yeah. Duke. and Purdue coming from the other end. So uh, and North Carolina State and who else did I have in there? No, no, no. I had no, Purdue. No, 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 UConn, the Huskies. UConn, you said UConn, UNC, North Carolina, Purdue, and Duke. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. That's a solid four. That's a good solid four, also. Absolutely. Well, I tell you, if Commodore's final four comes out out of all well, of us, that just set the three, three number one. Yeah. Three number I never one. win. Yeah, yeah. I that's never win. Never, win. never win. And Never win. Anybody here at Nobody Cares Sports. That's I'm like exactly the mush. Commodore, everybody's got to tune in. April 5th, we're going to be broadcasting opening day from Snug Harbor Little League. Scott, you may be on that call. Congratulations. Oh, You're terrific. Fine. I'm looking forward yeah. to that. Yeah, I can't do any of those because my son plays for South Shore Little League, so. Oh, I see. I may burst into flames if I show up to one of those. Oh. Oh, well, you're going to come down to South Shore and Bullshit. broadcast your stuff. Wait, that Bullshit. Is, Commodore's the... Uh, that video clip is oh, classic. It's, a, it's oh. incredible. I don't even know. I don't think I have it. 
Is your grandson there? I don't Which think. Is your grandson playing? I don't think I have that video queued up anymore, Bookie. Oh, no, 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 no. We can't watch don't, it again. No, though, really don't much. you dare. Don't you go there, Bookie. <laughs> no, this is what I said when, time, when Commodore yeah, said that. That. Who's yeah. playing here? Who's playing here? Your grandson? My son? God bless. Remember that one, Danny? Is that what he wants to go to? Oh, come on. Tom, can you get me off the hook? For old time's sake. Can't do it, Sally. That's going to be Bookie after all of his uh, picks come in empty on Long Monday. On. Can you get me off the hey, Don't, make, don't make me go get the Red Rider. Don't make me get no, the Red Rider. You shoot your thing. eye out with that thing. Commodore, say good night. Lord knows. Good night, everybody. Good Love morning. you all. Happy Easter. Kiss it eat you. <laughs> oh, Bookie, I don't want you to ever be like that man. You understand? Thank you, Bookie, for your final four picks. Lock them in, ladies and gentlemen. Bookie likes the North Carolina State Wolf Pack. No? Is that what you say? Yep. Yeah. You like the Yukon Huskies? Yes. You like the Alabama? The, the Alabama Tide slash Elephants. And your fourth team? Gonzaga Bulldogs. Gonzaga Bulldogs. All right. And then, Dougie, your final four? Uh, Yukon Huskies. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Arizona Wildcats. Gonzaga Bulldogs, NC State, Wolfpack. Now we're talking. Lock everything in. Uh, you know, gambling is legal. Bet against the bookie. He doesn't have a real app. We've been through this many times. April 5th, we're at Snug Harbor broadcasting Little League and so much more. If you want Nobody Cares Sports Network to come out and broadcast your sports game, it's real easy. We got sponsors. They've been listed on the bottom line all night. We'll do absolutely everything from kids to adults. That's why even March 30th, we're doing the St. Peter's Eagles alumni basketball game, which, Doug, it is hysterical. Oh, I can only imagine. Guys uh, show so, up. They never even played basketball. So, so Dan, re re Ever. Remember, they just went to the school for, like, a day, and they're like, <laughs> I'm here to play in the alumni game. It's like, what? Dan, re remember we spoke a couple weeks ago with Danny Lee, and Danny Lee was talking trash about the game that we were supposed to play against yeah. each other? That happened on Friday. My team got the win. Just oh, remember. okay. So we weren't going to talk about it, but then shots have been fired now. now. So that's one nil. I also almost broke a rib during the game, so that was that was interesting. Commodore broke a rib playing pickleball at YMCA, so you never know where your injuries well, are going to come from. And, and, and listen, dove into an Indian woman who was unsuspecting in the front row, had no idea what was taking place. That happens well, sometimes. She's no longer with us. You got to take him out sometimes. Pick yeah, no, absolutely. I, I want to I want to point it out what he says in you know, alumni games. Like you attend the school one day, and you still consider. As alumni, yes, you know? just like all these kids want to play the baseball from the minor leagues, want to call up to the major leagues for one bat, one at bat, one day, they consider themselves major leaguer, yeah, right. So, what's the difference? Where is he coming from with this? Oh, I'm coming from the left, he's <laughs> like Moonlight Graham, I yeah. understand. He's trying to just put the analogy out there. Oh, the analogy. Yeah. It sounds right to me. So you consider you move up to. From major, now on, so like Shohei, day. you're going to be Bookie's interpreter. All right. Oh, and yes. and you're gonna, what Bookie's trying to say is yeah. th that's I, perfect. I understand everything he's saying. To me right and now. the worst see, part is he's see, speaking see, English what? and I don't understand. See, Doug, Doug, you understand Chinese. That's no, he understands accurate. bad English, which is apparently Chinese. Same thing. Same thing. Well, our picks are in as well as your as well. Uh, Dan, what, was your, Dan, what was your final four? My final <laughs> four. Don't I don't even give my picks. Uh, yeah, no, he's interesting. You want my final four picks? Yes. Um, you, you can't be emotional with it. I I, I, I do think it's going to be something stupid like Gonzaga is going to be there. Okay. Um, I I don't think Purdue's making it. Okay. Um, UNC. I think gets bounced. Okay, a little bit too much tape on them. Um, North Carolina State might be that surprise team that stays alive just because they're hot. Yep. And um, you know the f fourth squad. I don't know. Illinois. Yo, Arizona is a really solid pick, man. Yeah. They're, you know they're good. They're solid. They're, they're you know program. they're 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 a solid pick. It, they're, those those other schools. Like, yeah, I'd be, I'd be shocked if Illinois was there. So, you Illinois I mean? fighting uh, Illinois? I don't know if that's, I think that might be a human in Illini. 
Do you think it's an animal bookie? If it's an it animal, is. we bet the farm right now. I don't think it is. <laughs> I don't think it is. Go fighting eyes. I'm not going to talk anything about Tennessee again, so just let's let's just cut the broadcast. You can never talk about Tennessee <laughs> again. The volunteer state. Oh, no religion, no politics. Until <laughs> next time, I'm telling you right now, support local sports because nobody cares. Bookie, anything? Yeah, well, this show, this movie is what? Uh, what? You'll get it. Take your time. Do you take the time? Wes, uh, who is our broadcast booth powered by, Bookie? I need coffee. Go to Main Street Coffee. You said it, mister. <laughs> he don't need no translator for that. Good night, everybody. Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs>